Hello, everybody. I'm John Locke, and I'd like to welcome you to the LockingYourSuccess.com Trading Performance Podcast, where it's all about real traders, real problems, and real coaching. Listen up and enjoy the segment. The topic here is around knowing when a particular strategy is losing its edge and how to best catch it early and or adapt quickly. When I watch your pro sessions, you're adapting so quickly. I don't think this question pertains to your situation necessarily. Maybe it does. I think it does. But more to trading strategies that take advantage of certain short-term market conditions and follow a set of guidelines or rules. Calendars are a good example of this right now, post-COVID crash. I hear, see this a lot also with day traders who have rules such as if I see this, then I do that. For example, let's say that we as traders find an edge emerge in a, and design a strategy around that edge. Everything is great for a number of months, years, but eventually there will be a time when no edge is longer there. It could be for a short time or it could be forever. We really don't know. One of the fears I have is continuing to trade the strategy and chalk it up to increasing losses while thinking that it's it might be a down year and the next year could be better, similar to how you pillar trades are viewed, right? Which is the, the standard non-subjective trade. You have to take the good with the bad. Is the answer here to meticulously track the variables, analyze why the trade's winning, fully understand where the trade will lose, and when those conditions are not there, you can adjust or make the determination that it's time to stop. Curious what your thoughts are on this. So fire away. <laughs> yeah. So excellent, like you said before, excellent question from Dan. And the lens that I'm looking at this question is from two perspectives, right? So we can look at this either through the lens of subjective trading or through the lens of trading by the guidelines. So mm -hmm. what I heard in the question was kind of both, right? So as subjective traders, whatever trade you've entered and whatever plan you've written, you know, you're going to know the strengths and weaknesses of the trade, right? As it relates to the market context. So whatever trade we enter as, we should be aware of changes are going to happen in the market, right? So what are some of those signals? Changes in butterfly price, changes in the entry delta, obviously that speaks to the skew in the IV analysis. And then from there, you can, in your plan, you should have signals to tell you when to campaign switch, move out of that trade into something else, which you just demonstrated, you know, in detail as you're doing. And the other part of his statement or question is, is that if we design a trade, and I'm taking that as, okay, now we're saying we've designed a trade that's when we're going to trade it rules-based. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a different way to look at it. In other words, if we're pros traders, we shouldn't be contained by whether a trade is losing or not, right? We're not going to just constantly trade the same trade. That's not what we're doing as pros traders. So let me talk to speak to it as if we've designed a trade, it's rules based, and we're trading it along. What are some of the things I need to know about that? Well, obviously, uh, as we need to know with any of our trades, what are the weaknesses? When does it perform poorly? What are what are the conditions in which it doesn't do well? And then also knowing some of our statistics around our trade, what are the consecutive losses of that trade? I'm assuming if we've designed a rules-based trade, we've back tested it. If it loses more than three times in a row, I think that was for the bull trade, right? We, we had that rule of thumb. Then we know, what was it, John? If it loses three in a row, we know the fourth is going to win. So maybe you would size it up. So that's a little different different way <laughs> well, to look his, at it. Historically, that was the case. That is the case. If right. It's never, if it, historically, it's never lost more than three times, but that doesn't mean it's going to win necessarily. But that's right. It's an, right. an interesting statistic, right? Right. But it's but it, that speaks to knowing. You know, he's saying when when should we stop trading a trade? Well, that's part of knowing it. You know, how, how often does it lose? And obviously, before you go in any trade, you need to have some kind of parameters in place. Can I make a comment, Stephen? Yeah. Most traders don't really know when their strategy is going to lose because the approach they take when they're trading the market is I'm going to go in and I'm going to back test this thing and I'm going to tweak the rules until it doesn't lose anymore. Yeah, curve That fit, does not right. tell you a goddamn thing about when that <laughs> trade is going to win and when that trade is going to lose. Yeah. All it does is give you a false perception that you fixed a problem that you don't even know exists. Right. 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 And, and that in a nutshell is why a trader wouldn't know whether his strategy still has edge or not. He's not paying attention to the things he needs to pay attention to in order to right. figure out what the hell it is. Okay. Yeah. So, and to, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, and to that point, going back through the lens of his question, and we've designed a trade. Well, 
let's think about what prompts us to design a trade. We're designing it in the context of the market we're currently in, right? So there's already bias in it. And so you're designing a trade. Let's say we're in a bullish market, right? It's 2017. Um, let's be extreme. You're doing the V17 at not 77 days, but 56 days with a bull kicker. Okay. You're bullish, right? Yeah. Well, you've yeah. designed that trade. So when should we stop trading that trade? And again, I'm oversimplifying it. When the market is no longer trending up, you know, based on whatever technical view you want to take or an implied volatility take, right? Because you can, it's amazing to me, even to this day, how many clues you can get from the option market that we get from changes in butterfly prices, consistent butterfly prices, right? If you're tracking 56 days, 20 points below the money in the Russell, and you see that thing change materially, maybe that's not mm. happening in the market, but I see it in butterfly prices or even more sensitive sometimes can be changes where that T plus zero line peaks out. The changes in, now I'm entering this 56, when I say entering, it's more entry test, right? I've modeled up my butterfly and now the Delta is drastically different than what I saw the last six months. Maybe that's not reflected in the price action yet. Those are huge. Right. That's so huge MGI, market generated information, right? So those are some things that help you get out ahead of, hey man, change is coming. Right, so what you're saying, just, just so I can clarify and verify, mm -hmm. is that you can watch your T plus zero line and so forth, and you can see changes in the implied volatility market without necessarily having any price movement difference. That oftentimes can be the case. And then right. obviously other times it's sort of the other way around, but one, let's say it is right. Like, oh, we've get to get this drastic move in the market and you need to monitor for that on whether that's going to be a consistent change because 2018 and 2019 was whipsaw city. Oh, we've changed. Oh, we went back. Oh, we've changed. Oh, we went back. <laughs> right. <laughs> we had these well, volatility explosions, these skew changes, and then it went right back to where it was. That's um, a problem right so right even no matter how good you ever get at this analyzing mm -hmm. the market and, mm -hmm. and positioning your trades you're mm -hmm. going to lose most of the time when the market shifts for that yeah. particular cycle you're probably going to lose right. that cycle but once that cycle happens you should be aware of what the shift was and be able to correct for it yeah that's a good point and there has to be a level of acceptance i'm going to lose when that sh transition happens now how am i going to respond it's not oh, let me change the trade so that when that transition happens again, I won't lose because guess what? When it normalizes the market, you're now you're gonna lose. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, you're just changing so, where you're gonna lose, that's all. Yeah. yeah, so I'll kind of put a bow on this and hand it back over to you. But, but I just wanted to make the point that I kind of look at his question from the lens of, if we're subjective traders, it shouldn't be a situation where, you know, is this trade, not working anymore because that's not even the style of pro trader right where mm -hmm. that's the purpose we're flow trading I, you know my you your last example you were in ub1 v17 and the hammock trade three different trades so we shouldn't right. be subject to that constraint so the other perspective is what if we've developed a rules-based trade how do we know when to stop trading it and i think i i've brought up several indicators Besides knowing the trade inside and out and knowing the weakness, you, you, you know, the first thing, other than the things we talked about that would, you know, change in T plus zero line, delta and butterfly pricing is think about what context you created that trade in. The opposite is going to be the weakness. Yeah. The other thing too, right. And, and again, this goes back to the way people design strategies. They do something or make up rules that did well recently, and then they fine tune them by going and back testing the past. And then they think the position is all set now going into the future. But the problem is when they took that rule set into the past, what they did is they, most of the time what they're fine tuning is they filtered out enough yeah. bad instances where they're willing to trade the trade going forward. And they didn't really learn anything about the trade. And they really, they covered up the, the actual weakness of the trade through basically modifying the rules so that the trade was lucky. Yeah, just just full right. disclosure disclaimers, you know, when Dan, uh, I don't think he's uh, was able to attend, so he'll be watching the recording. Been there, done that. 
Oh, absolutely. Curve, curve fitted city. Same here. Uh, total recency <laughs> bias. I think we're in this market. I'm designing this trade and I'm trading it from here to kingdom come. I'm not really saying that, but subconsciously I am. Mm -hmm. I want to trade this until forever. Of course you do, because that's you know? the human condition, right? The human right. condition is that's natural. You know, we seek reward. We we, we avoid pain. Right. And we, uh, right. We 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 want to do it with the with the least amount of effort possible. That's a human condition. It just doesn't work with trading. <laughs> right. So I I hope that gives enough for Dan to work with. But as as it relates to calendars, you know, I could speak to a, a quick personal experience. Was in twenty it was about a year ago this time, doing calendars, and I noticed short-term calendars, I noticed that the expiration was um, compressing. Just cost more to get in the trade. It's easy things like that to say, hey, things are changing. So mm -hmm. in any case, I'll, I'll hand it back to you, John, but that's the way I looked at that. And that is what I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments or anything else you'd like to see in the next Trading Performance Podcast, please list that in the comments and I'll personally answer your questions and comments for you. Also, I'd love to encourage you to come on over to LockingYourSuccess.com. That's L-O-C-K-E in your success.com and check out our trading performance and pro memberships where you can find the tools you need to become a much more effective trader, regardless of the type of trading you do. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the next trading performance podcast.